Jet Blue. Blueski. It's coming in. It's coming in. Um, listen, I was requested this. Um, I, I was requested. Someone requested this video in my DM. Yeah, you gotta react to the never ending beef with the ball. Burger Ball versus Johnson. This is definitely. Oh, guys. Um, I still have the double deck of buses that guy. Um, yeah, y'all was jacking them buses heavy. We did not ever have them buses. Nah, this is fire though to see how it looked back then. Oh, yeah. Damn, 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 but listen, nah, that shit packed in. Yeah, like, that that's like, look like something. Listen, time to this video because I want to know what Burger Ball versus Johnson is. That's what I mean. But listen, JV not here. You know, you have to go. Have a little high. It's pretty sure yeah, well, he had like a surgery, right? Would you call that a surgery? Yeah. Uh, a medical procedure. Yeah, like a mini. I would, nah, I wouldn't even call that a surgery. No medical procedure? Yeah, he just had a procedure. Yeah. He gonna be back in action, I don't even trip. Uh, subscribe to like, comment. 50,000, we did. Yes, sir. We did, you did. did you help us get the 50,000? Or are you helping us get the 60? And then 70? You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be, you could be a part of this journey with us, you feel me? We we'll definitely have another channel. Go subscribe to that, different content. That's the main channel, I didn't know. I mean, a lot of people think this is just, uh, Definitely have to maneuver and separate between the content and shit. But definitely top of this video. I'm gonna waste your time already. Let's get it, man. Oh, of y'all. It's 9.85 in Birmingham, and the police officers slapped a fine notice onto an illegally parked car outside the car. When officers tried to arrest the man, he... It's 1985 in Birmingham, and the police officers slapped a fine notice onto an illegally parked car outside the car. When officers tried to arrest the man, he fled inside the car, where other people in the car started to protect the man and throw objects at the policeman. The violence started getting madder throughout the night, eventually turning into looting and even firebombs, which even resulted in two brothers who owned the local post office being burnt to death. This took place in the yeah. Hansworth district of Birmingham, where unemployment was rife, and the large majority of the population was either Caribbean or Asian. This riot breeded a Caribbean gang in the district, which was eventually used to protect each other against the highly racist police and white supremacists. The gang were called In Chile, and they started to become quite notorious after two members were charged for the double murder of the oh my God, I mean, uh, he used to protect each other against the highly racist police and white supremacists. The gang were called In Chile, and they. I was probably the Dukes. Nah, he got this. The the Duke Dukes. Started to become quite notorious after two members were charged. He's probably different back then. Who know? He's probably different. He has glasses. He looked like a he looked like a Bronx nigga. No, it definitely looks like. Oh, he looked like some Grandmaster Flash nigga. <laughs> if he would have had, it was like he would have had a better bottom fit. Yeah. He would have looked like some real like the Bronx is like yeah. Nah, yeah, no cap. Charged for the double murder of the two brothers who were burnt alive in their post office. So as I said before, In Chai was starting to become more notorious after two oh, members. Jamaican charged... niggas are lies. It's just, just like you see, there's Jamaican niggas in the Bronx in all of New York too. So. Yeah. Makes for sense. the double murder. Members from In Chai started hanging outside the Caribbean restaurant in Birmingham called Johnson's Caribbean Takeaway. They started to call themselves the Johnson Crew, or Johnny's for short. This was in the 90s when the crack and heroin market started booming in Birmingham and the Johnny's wanted a piece of it. So started running up the drugs market and controlling security at some nightclubs where their drugs would be served. Using violent tactics to take over Jamaican yardies who once ran the drugs in the city. But in 1992, tensions between members of the Johnny's were started to mount after a member called Super D was charged for murder another member over a female. This caused half of the Johnson crew to break off from the gang and form their own gang up the road. The locals started to call the break off gang the Burger Boys because they would rob stores and go back to the Burger Bar Cafe on Soho Road in Hansworth, Birmingham, which was not too far from the Johnson's Caribbean takeaway where the original Johnson members were chill. There were also more tensions due to a number of other reasons, but the problem was the gangs didn't have a specific area where they were from. They just had takeaway spots they chilled at, and more time the opposing gangs would be living right next to each other in the same area. With them so I'm very confused. So niggas just did they dirt and went back to the same. Damn, we got it bad. This, this was mad long ago. They ain't had no cameras, nothing. Like this that. is not even over here. This is over there. Yeah. That's tight. I ain't never even seen footage of shit like this over there. Niggas that really old. Had, niggas really had safe houses. That's what I'm saying. Niggas said we ain't. Niggas said we don't even fuck if we over here. We about to post it on your block. This is about to be where we hang, nigga. It was probably spot stuff. It was. Mm -hmm. So we about to go do this and get our munch. Back to the hangout. <laughs>
Majority of them all growing up together and attending the same school. Then eventually both sides started picking areas which made more sense for them to rest. Maybe just because Fuck that hat on your head in the same school then eventually both sides started picking areas which made more sense for them to work maybe just because that's where the majority of the members live Let's so the go. johnny's crew started claiming two areas he definitely got more hair in the back One. like holding it yeah, yeah. there ain't no way yo search of kevin garnett hat never fall off he's bald shit yo he put glue underneath his hat got to well, Los Hills and Astro, uh, well, but... know, it's not it's a hoodie his shit. oh yeah his hoodie yeah, in <laughs> fact oh. nigga hoodie never come off Talk about members started claiming two areas called Handsworth and Winston Green, leaving some members who couldn't move house to switch gang depending on the area sometimes. By 1994, the beef was in full swing, and members from both sides started tit for tat shootings. The same year in April, a group of Johnson members made their way to a party in Newtown and knocked on the door to the party. A man called Keith Copeland opened the door, and immediately Johnson members shot him in the head with a shotgun. A Johnson's yeah. member yeah. Keith yeah. Copeland opened the door, and immediately Johnson members shot him in the head with a shotgun. A Johnson's member named Ringo was originally charged for the murder but was eventually found innocent due to a lack of witnesses and evidence. So the war was started to heat up in the area but it was just going to get more hotter. In between Hansworth and Aston, which are two opposing areas in this feud, there was another estate called Newtown which for the most part stayed neutral throughout the war but this all changed when kids from the Newtown estate and members from the Johnsons were playing football in a park in Newtown. Burger Boy saw this and shot into the crowd of boys playing football which resulted in Newtown siding with the Johnsons and Newtown weren't here to play with the Burger Bar crew. A Burger a bar member called Ruben was chasing a Newtown member down the street. When two Newtown members aged 13 and 15 then clocked onto this, they ran at Ruben and stabbed him over 20 times. The 13 year old boy served 7 years for the murder and was eventually released. But he hadn't even been out for a year yet when him and 5 other Johnson members ran into a nightclub and shot a bouncer after he attempted to stop them, which the 13 year old was eventually, sent, eventually released. But he hadn't even been out for a year yet when him and 5 other Johnson members ran into a nightclub and shot a bouncer after after he attempted to stop them, which the 13 year old was eventually sentenced to 30 years in prison for. The Johnson. Damn. Alright. Nigga said, no, no, no. See, one body is crazy. Seven years for one body is crazy. That's a cold focus? Definitely. That's not the first, though. And that nigga driving on that side. That's what I'm saying. That's just that. There really is a, is a, is a puzzling theory. Seven years for one body is crazy. I'm not the feds either. Not, I'm definitely a regular person right there. I don't even think feds drive for it over there. I don't think that's what they be using, like, benzes and shit. Oh, no, nah, that's or, like, beast. beamers. Oh, no, nah, that's beast. Them, them niggas catch you, nigga. Them niggas that's definitely cool. catch you. Yeah, some charges. Yeah, they be in, like, American, all American made shit. Right? When you see them shit. Oh yeah, the, the high, that's, yeah, the highway police, they're getting some fast shit, some state troops, they're being like the Corvettes and shit. not catching them, the Corvettes are just quiet. Man, they're being fast shit to make also shot another member of the Burger Bar crew called Bubbler when members surrounded his car and shot him in the head point blank rage killing him. By 1998 the two gangs had single handedly rose the gun crime rate in Birmingham by 500% making Birmingham the gun crime capital of the UK. At one point on a good day there will be one shooting on a bad day there will be around six which is crazy for a country where guns are illegal. The Burger Boys retaliated for their member Bubbler being shot in the head. Burger members ran into a Johnson member's apartment called Menace and literally grabbed him and threw him out the window of his 10th floor apartment. A burger bar member was heard bragging about it and was arrested but charges were dropped due to no evidence. But the burger boys really wanted to show the Johnsons they mean business and ended 1999 with one of the most gruesome murders in his beef. It was New Year's Eve and a Johnsons member called Corey went into a party at Winston Green which is the territory of his ops which are the burger bar crew but found no one. But next day there was another party in Hansworth which is again part of the burger bar's territory. Corey entered the party armed with a bulletproof vest and a shotgun like he's about to enter a war zone man. At the party he bucked into some burger bar members who told him to come outside. The burger bar members waited for him outside the alley packed with guns and Corey walked outside towards them and shot a shotgun for the first shot shooting one member in the hip. Burger bar members then massacred Corey in the rain of- They did anything like, nah that's beast. Yeah that's beast. He did this dozo, knowing that, yo, bro, I'm gonna do this. Like, all right, you gonna go looking for trouble? All right, bet, so be it. But at least have niggas. You about to go to a party on the outside, 
Oh, and you it's not about to be more. You think a shotgun and one bulletproof vest was about to just. And it's more than one thinking, bro. It's like, I bet you're gonna get your shot off, but you hit one, it's more likely, like a couple more niggas. That's what I'm saying. That's crazy, man. And I'm talking about the slaughter of my dolly. With it, literally surrounding him, shooting him over 70 times altogether. Eventually, after you were shot so many times, a member even grabbed his own shotgun and began to start shooting Corey with it after he was dead. One of the men suspected of this murder was a burger bar member called Micah. He was actually shot himself a couple months after the murder of Corey. The police were working hard to try and get someone convicted for the massacre of Corey because these murders and shootings were becoming more and more common, and no one was getting booked. <laughs> Wicked. No, nah, you're showing like a 70 times. And one of them was in the, I mean, and some of them were shotguns. It's like, how do he look? That nigga look like nothing. That's what I'm trying to say, like. Ain't even no way you could take 70 shots to still be identified. <clears throat> he had that like, vest, but it didn't, didn't do that much. Trust me. For them. Birmingham was starting to look like the Wild West. Police started begging witnesses to come through about the murder. And seeing that there was about 200 people at the party, police thought there would be enough witnesses for some people to try and go and testify against them. But the police underestimated the hold these two gangs had on the local population. Exactly. Civilian. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Like, you care for my safety? I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, and they niggas, you know, they helping out the hood. So it's like they ain't going for that, you know what I'm saying? We don't even know if they're helping out the hood. Well, like, yeah, they, yeah, they we don't even know. The spots. No, yeah, we don't even know if they are. I mean, I would hope. I would hope. I don't know if they was on that top. Nah, but yeah, yeah. They definitely, like, even if you hold that type of fear and niggas know you, like, oh, yeah, that nigga right there, yeah, I saw you there last night. They ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't, I ain't <laughs> seen nothing. I, ain't, I don't even know no, what's like, going on. No, look at him. Teens were terrified of the two gangs, and snitching was one of the worst things you could get caught doing. Yeah. Only one witness actually ended up oh, testing. Talking about the fucking. Oh, wait, hold on, by eventually, but all she said was that she saw one member with a gun earlier. But this wasn't enough to prosecute anyone. And again, there was another unsolved murder in the area. Then the 2000s hit, and younger factions of both gangs started to emerge from the estates, and the burger bar name was starting to fade away. And most of the youngers from the area started claiming a new name called RMD or BT1 Banger. See, once the 2000s, it was just—it was about to start getting drilly. What Jay was saying, young nigga world. This when we got in the mix. Listen, nah, they started. That's what we got. Bad niggas started making their own little factions. Probably over. I, I don't know how it went over there, but you're probably right though. It's probably mad. Just different little branch offs. Probably how it was for everybody though. On some shit. Oh uh, yeah. It's like, cause back then it was probably like, oh man, I don't know. It's probably like OG members that had old. I don't know though. Cause they were young niggas. They be wild and they never with it. You see? <laughs> Yeah. Same thing with the Johnson's works. crew. Youngers from the area started to roll around naming themselves Slash instead, which breeded a new generation of this war. RMD and BT1 Bangers versus Slash. But for the purpose of the video and to make it easier to understand the division, I'm gonna keep the name to Johnson's and Burger Bar crew when referring yeah. to the two separate sides, because if not, it can get quite confusing. And it didn't take long for the younger generation to follow suit of their olders. It was March 6th, 2000, outside the club in Birmingham called Fozzies. And for once, it seemed like a peaceful night. It hit the club 6 a.m. closing time and people started leaving the club one of these people being a young father called christopher clark he was known to chill with a few people associated with the johnson crew around 10 younger members from the burger bar crew spotted christopher and started bottling him but then one member brought out a shank which stabbed him twice in the chest which reached through his heart and killed him and then the killers ran away from the scene christopher was known to hate the johnsons especially because they used to bother his girlfriend four out of the 10 members were eventually caught cool. one of these including a burger bar member called 13 who was named after his prison cell number a johnson Johnson's crew member actually managed to shoot 13 in the leg for revenge, but he survived. Two days after this shooting, 13 and three other members were arrested and charged for the murder. But all murder charges were eventually dropped and were lessened to a charge of violent disorder because the judges couldn't figure out who actually stabbed Christopher. See, this was about 12 years before joint enterprise was introduced, which is the law now where essentially you could be convicted for a crime your friend done if you have some type of involvement or role to. Oh, there's some shit too that, um. Remember I was talking about, like, if your man's dogs, they could put that murder on you. That's why I want to draw. Yeah. That's wacky. That's wacky. <laughs> What's even more wacky is why y'all playing dress up in the courtroom? Y'all playing with niggas' lives? What you mean? Bro, take them, take them wigs off, bro. What are y'all doing? 
Let's order in a court, my nigga. But let's get serious. We playing with niggas' lives here. Y'all playing with niggas' lives. Here. Playing. For example, if you're beating somebody up and your friend ends up stabbing and killing them, you'll both be done for murder. So before this was introduced, it was hard for joint murders to be pinned. As They do it. You get the same money. Fish. What if it was like, damn, I didn't even know you was going to do that that day, bro. Like, nah, you going to take this seven, you going to take this seven. Have fun. That's wicked. Like, what? Mm. Oh, yeah. than anyone. But the beef really started heating up after Burger Bar's boss, a man nicknamed Nozzle, was shot while he parked up in his car on Johnson's crew territory. Nozzle was then said to have planned a retaliation hit. A man linked to the Johnson's crew called Askaya had just came out of prison and was back on the streets. He was posted up in his BMW on a nice sunny day when the Vauxhall car pulled up beside him. Inside the Vauxhall were two men with semi-automatic handguns and more than 20 shots were fired at him, killing him broad day on a residential street. Now the police wanted to catch the killers badly, but there was no evidence. The only evidence they had was a strand of Noz's hair found inside the Vauxhall car. The police found that enough to be evidence to put Noz down for the murder, but eventually, years later, Noz got his appeal and was released under insufficient evidence. He wasn't out for long though, after being found guilty of running the national gun smuggling ring and was given a life sentence for the second time in his life. Now let's fast forward to five months time. Remember 13, one of the members who- second time in his life. Now let's fast forward to five months time. Remember 13, one of the members who was sentenced for his part of the murder of Christopher Clark. He had just been paroled from prison after serving two and a half years and moved to a nearby town called West Bromwich and was trying to turn his life around and leave the gang life behind him. But as we know, the gang life doesn't work like that. When you're in, you're locked in for life. So 13 thinking he's starting a new life in the new town, started to hand out leaflets for a new promotional company he was trying to run. One of these leaflets go into two girls who had boyfriends or affiliates of the Johnsons. Crew. Real quick, one of the girls called their boyfriends and gave the drop on 13. I thought he been. That's working. Oh when man. To, when, you, when you try to do shit like that, what would you, what would you recommend a nigga do that? Just move out of his whole jurisdiction. Yeah. Did he move that far though? Did they say he moved that far or was it still in the same? Uh, it was probably still in the same shit. You really gotta separate from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, like, even little shit like that, like a move from the block, like you definitely. Niggas, uh, niggas looking for you to sell them off. And two members pulled up to the drop in a stolen BMW and fired nine shots into 13, leaving him dead on the scene, which left both of the girls who set him up and the boys who killed him with life sentences. Then New Year's hit and the Johnsons were throwing a New Year's party. The party started at a nightclub where Johnson's members were said to be mocking 13's death, which was somehow relayed onto Burger Bar members. The after party was in a cramped hair salon, which had over 150 people partying in there. Burger Bar got the drop quick and rid there in the Red Mondeo with a Mac 10 and a couple handguns. While a group of Johnson members were outside with a bunch of girls. Burger Bar set fire onto the crowd, leaving 47 rounds on the scene. Six people were shot, including four females and two males. One member even hopping out of the car. Yeah, I know more girls are gonna get shot than niggas. Just because I was thinking, niggas fake know what to do when bullets is going off. I know how to maneuver because I'm used to this. Bitches is just like, oh my god. And it's just like niggas is like, no, 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 no get closer to shoot at certain individuals. Two of these female shots included two cousins, Charlene Ellis and Latisa Charlene. A man called Nathan was the brother of Charlene and he rang up his half-brother immediately called Marcus after the shooting because Marcus was a member of the Burger Bars. Once Nathan told Marcus about the shooting, Marcus simply asked if they were dead. Nathan then checked and confirmed while crying that they're both dead. Marcus put down the phone and went on the run, realizing he had just took part of the murder of his own half-sister. Five members were found guilty for the He was just his half sister. So you telling me that he wait wait wait. So one of the niggas that did that drill killed his half sister. Then? Wait, what type of time is wait, this? Wait, 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 what the fuck? 
Hawking. And he rang up his half brother and Letitia Charlene. A man called Nathan with last shots included two cousins, Charlene Ellis and Letitia Charlene. A man called Nathan was the brother of Charlene. And he rang up his half brother immediately called Marcus after the shooting because Marcus was a member of the Burger Bars. Once Nathan told Marcus about the shooting, Marcus simply asked if they were dead. Nathan then checked and confirmed while crying that they're both dead. Marcus put down the phone and went on the run, realizing he had just took part of the murder of his own half sister. Five members were found guilty for the double murder, with one member nicknamed Dread eventually acquitted for the trial. But a couple days after Dread was bailed, he was shot nine times in his head, back, and neck by Johnson members, but survived. Dread was actually on another two. These niggas be eating bullets. <laughs> Yo, shit, nah. Fifty cent shit. Murder charges after this, but both also got dropped before he was eventually convicted and sentenced for his fourth murder charge in 2015 in an internal situation. So at this point, there were countless tit for tat shootings and murders, which I could talk about for hours. But let's fast forward to 2004 when the Johnsons crew started to hit the booth under their new name Slash. These were in the Channel U days, which was a channel back in the day that used to broadcast all the new UK rap and gram tunes. It was pretty much the Link Up TV and GRM Daily before YouTube came out, and Slash started to get some serious traction on the channel, even collabing with the American group Dipset, which is something impressive to do back then to get it's recognition fine. and even jump on the track with an American. The group started to rise some controversy as well though, when the member was shot dead in the middle of a music video for a track called Hardball after an internal dispute. And after Burger Bar members started making diss tracks back to the Slash crew, it was starting to become clear from the outside that Slash Burger Bar member in the middle of a music video. I definitely look like he was crippled. Yo, for a track called Hard. There's some controversy as well though. When the member was shot dead in the middle of a music video for a track called Hardball after an internal dispute. And after Burger Bar members started making diss tracks back to the Slash crew, it was starting to become clear from the outside that Slash wasn't any normal music group. While this was all happening, there was more issues brewing up in the town. A 14 year old black girl was caught stealing in the Asian hair shop and was supposedly dragged to the back of the shop and sexually assaulted by several Asian men. This took place in Newtown, which was an area of Philly with the Johnsons. So they rioted, burnt down and smashed up Asian shops around the town, which caused massive brawls between black and Asian people, resulting in one black guy called Desire Young Sam being stabbed to death by several Asians. In one day of rioting, there was one murder, countless shootings and 35 people seriously wounded. The riots ended up lasting another two days, when Newtown gangs were starting to shoot at Asian gangs in an attempt to get revenge for Desire. In one occasion, armed police were searching for a gang that was spotted shooting at a group of Asians. The group ran off while helicopters were were searching for them. While running, an 18 year old called Aaron accidentally pushed over his friend called Dwayne while they were scattering away from police. The fool ended up with Dwayne accidentally discharging his handgun, shooting his friend Aaron in the head, killing him instantly. This ignited a whole different feud in the area between Johnson's gangs, which were predominantly Caribbean, against Asian gangs. But for a bit of time, it was mainly just tensions between the both races and some rare little spouts of violence. Until the 13th of October 2006, when two black gang members from Newtown stabbed two Asian gang members. This was the same day of a man called Blanks' 20th birthday, who was also a Johnson's affiliated gang member. And without Blanks having any prior knowledge of the previous attack one of his members done in the Asian that day, he was shot in the chest and killed on his birthday. This murder was followed up by countless shootings, with two Asian men even being shot in the face three days later. And later on in the month, a well-known Asian gang leader was shot to death inside his shop when two men walked into his shop and shot him twice in the head with a shotgun. Now let's fast forward to one of the biggest moments in UK history in recent years. Some of 2011, when a man called Mark Duggar was shot and killed by police in London, the whole country rioted. And if he was around these times, you would know the whole country was in anarchy, including Birmingham. In one occasion, a group of men lured police towards a pub after firebombing it, and then began shooting at the police once they arrived, which six men were sentenced for 12 to 30 I years stretch. Like, he, he, no, like, he did everything they and quite a lot of older members got sentences for their roles they played in the riots, which made it quite a weird time once the riots were done, and made the older gangs which were Johnson and Burger Bar affiliated more relevant. And around these times, the new generation was starting to grow up, didn't have much ties towards the old fuse oh, that were going. Niggas dropping around that time. Niggas hit like a war zone. Niggas called over, just swung open. 
shit just in the middle of the road. Um, starting the new feud with members from the Hansworth, Winston Green and Hawkside calling themselves AR down. or armed response feud. With members from the Hansworth, Winston Green and Hawkside calling themselves AR or armed response, and members from Newtown calling themselves GMG or Get Money Gang. By the mid 2010s, both gangs had brought gun violence back to Birmingham, with over 20 reported shootings between both of them within a fortnight. And not too long after the Big Spouse shooting, a song dropped on YouTube called M to the N from a member of the AR side called Lynch, referencing real moments like when a 16 year old got shot in the back at a barbecue. When police found this video, they started investigating Lynch heavily, especially after a bullet was found under his car after a shooting was linked to him. And he looked even more suspicious after him and another member was arrested in September after their car was stopped and searched, and balaclavas, gloves and stab vests were found inside the car. After months of investigating, police managed to link Lynch to six shootings and found drugs, ammunition and a gun stashed in his house, slapping him with a 27 year sentence. Lynch really put drill music on the radar in Birmingham though, because after Lynch was arrested, his rivals GMG started dropping drill tunes laced with disses towards the AR gang, which started to intensify the rivalry and increase the shootings in the area. So police launched, which was at the time the biggest gang injunction in the UK on both of the gang. This injunction banned 18 members from GMG and AR from Birmingham, despite them living and growing up in the city. Yeah. You just ban niggas? Hey, you can't come back here. No, no that's crazy. So it's like, no, we cannot control this shit. Just get the fuck up out of here. Didn't they, didn't they try to do that shit before, though? Like, should we? That's some shit that's like... Ban niggas is like, crazy. Keith can't go back to Chicago. Like, banned? I don't be banned, but you, you not stepping foot in there. I don't know, because... Niggas were saying that he could see how they want, but niggas would think got him if he had a one with him. Maybe it's for some little shit. I don't know. Yeah, but I feel like depending on what it is, niggas could definitely like, yeah, you can't come back here or some shit. Yeah, that's fake walk, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, nigga. And if they were caught cool in Birmingham, they'd be facing an instant two years What's that shit they try to do to Duke? That's another, that's, that's what I was thinking about. Duke. You ever seen that shit? Duke Dennis, you gotta look at his vlogs. He went back to his hood on like D Block Day, and the boys was done like, nah, cause he he had went back after he had got banned. He got banned from North Carolina. He got banned from his hood. Nah, that's walking. Cause it was like, yo, we seen your videos. If you doing these cookouts and shit, ah uh, ah, uh, you know, they she's shooting around, ah uh, ah, and we feel like you a big like. Person around here, da da da. You be having like mad people outside. Oh, like, like the gang niggas from there. Yeah. So it was just like, nah, you can just come back here, like during the year. Yeah, there was there was a nigga body. This injunction also banned members from making drill music, which they believe to be one of the sources intensifying the beat. And if you look on YouTube, you'll find most songs from yeah, both yeah, sides are re-uploaded because the originals got removed from YouTube as part of the injunction. But this gang injunction wasn't stopping anything on the street, so the police started getting more hands-on, sending out undercover officers to survey areas of high gang activity. In one occasion, undies were patrolling the block of the AR gang when two members from the AR gang fired two shots into the undies car, thinking it was the rival gang GMG lurking on their block. Which makes sense why they thought that because the beef in the area was as tense as ever. Not too long after this situation, GMG members were out looking for AR members in Winston Green. They were in a Ford Cougar, packed with members, and started shooting at a group outside the takeaway they thought were AR members. They didn't end up hitting anyone, so they were out looking for more members. When they found an AR member called K Rizzi's Mercedes parked outside his dad's house, so the GMG members let out fire onto his car, hitting K Rizzi's innocent passenger who was sitting inside the car. See, K Rizzi wasn't even in the car at the time. He was inside his dad's house while his friend was sitting outside his. So when he came back and heard the news of his friend getting shot, he lost his head. The next day, K Rizzi and another AR member called Dazza were looking for revenge on GMG's block with a Mac 11. They found Father of Four Skelly outside a set of shots and let fire into him, killing him instantly. And both were revenge. Back to back. Nah, yeah. Like, this nigga did this today, we're gonna do this tomorrow. Hell yeah. Like, I don't know if that's just like, yo, bro, what's going on? Definitely get back gang the awesome shit is here. Next morning. Jeez.
eventually sentenced to life for this murder. Then the new wave of drill came to Birmingham, which was mainly led by a gang in Newtown called Nine Boys, who are linked with GMG. One artist which you might have heard of is called Trills. He blew up after getting 3.5 million views on his hit song Birmingham City, and his name was even more hot when in March of this year he was stabbed in the head by AR members. Well, this was actually a revenge attack after six schoolboys from Newtown and Aston rid out to Hansworth in a seven seater car, shooting and stabbing a 15 year old AR member called K1 while he was talking to his girlfriend outside his house. Currently, four years between 14 to 17 have denied murder and they will go to trial in October. Now, there's been quite a few more situations of deaths which have happened recently, but I'm not going to cover them in this video. But this war has been going on for longer than 25 years and isn't going anywhere. And I'm pretty sure some of the gang members who rep both sides now don't even know about half the people which have died for the same gang they rep. So, guys, just think about that next time you find yourself in these situations. It's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out. Crazy. That was, that was some good information right there, good history. Just to think that this was all one game. Just got separated over to just a little beef and it was just, yep. That shit kept going as the years went on, it got worse. Really Music definitely, you feel me? Like all these niggas' ancestors was all like in the same game. Oh, yeah. Like they was all them, like all them niggas around from that area, like all them, you know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Like those are all the young niggas from them areas from the people that was, you know what I'm saying, the games before. Yeah, it's just crazy when you grew up there, it's like, not all some shit, it's like, that's how you was like, that's like, I don't know, some shit, like, you were just known to know that those are the niggas not to fuck with. Some shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, like you already kids. born, like, them niggas done already put in pain on our side, like, yeah, like, this, nah. like, yeah, niggas are already grieving. See, <laughs> like, yeah, that has been Jimmy R. Uh, Kid Nerd, Burger Ball versus Johnson. If you more content like this, definitely drop it down below. You feel me? Javen will be back. Let me see the Gaza. Then go subscribe to this channel. Give him 400 subs. Let's go. So it's going through. So we gotta, you feel me? We gotta do this for y'all. More content coming 50,000. I love y'all.